You can't separate the romance of this industry from the culture. People love being around airplanes. They love to fly. I've only seen my father cry twice in his life. Once when his mother died, and once when his son, with a, gra with a degree to graduate from the University of Notre Dame, was telling him he's going to be a pilot instead of an accountant. People sometimes look at where FlexJet is today and where the companies are that we own, and they say, wow, that's been a, a meteoric rise. And I go, yeah, well, meteoric over 42 years. I was a, an airline pilot for a brief period of time and got laid off. So I felt I needed to have more security than just working for an airline and being whims to what their growth pattern was. Maybe three or four years after I was pilot, I bought a small little charter company. And I called my dad up and I said, Dad, I think I want to buy this small charter company because at least I'll have some control over the business. More importantly, I wanted to control my own schedule. So I had this little business in parallel with the flying. I loved flying international and I, and I got to go to over a hundred different countries in those flying days. I had done Bill Clinton, Barbara Streisand, Brian Adams, Bruce Springsteen, I did three of his tours. I did Elton John. I'd done all I wanted to do in international flying and I started to focus more into building businesses and starting to develop them. There are people that can be trusting in their life and there are people that just can't do it. We as a company, one of the most important things we're measuring you for in an interview is your ability to trust. It's sometimes in conflict with growing fast because trust can be destroyed in a millisecond, but it takes years to build. Yes, you're not gonna get it right all the time and some people will take advantage. I think that empathy is one of the most important traits a business leader can have. If you can put yourself in somebody's shoes and, and understand it, I think it, it makes you become a better leader. I was searching for what could be the differential now? Is it really just flying somebody from here to there? So now 2011, I go in this Bentley dealership. While my son and my wife are driving around, the salesman puts down a storyboard. He picks the paint, the woodwork, the two tones of leather, and then he puts another one next to me. By the time they come back, I'd had four different beautiful looking designs in front of me. And I thought, why doesn't that translate to an airplane? What's wrong with an airplane being bespoke? And so we translated from that idea of how Bentley brought this individuality to each one of their cars and we said, what a great way to show our customers that we're passionate about aviation, but to think that our senior leadership takes the time to do every one of the aircraft in its own way. I think we're in what are gonna be the best five years in aviation as we transition from what was a restrictive, should I fly to, if I have the opportunity, I'm going to. If we don't lead the charge, in sustainability will be the villain. We have a company called 4Air, which really is trying to take the lead. Everybody thinks I'm gonna carbon offset my flight, but there's not only the carbon that's burned to fly, right? It's all the ancillary stuff that goes around it. It's operating the airport. That's kind of phase two. Phase three is really sustainable materials in the plane, sustainable fuel. That's farther off because we don't have all the solutions there. We need pioneers to evolve that. It's just the right thing to do. I've been in this business for 40 years, but the next 20 are gonna be absolutely amazing because it's gonna be like the Wright Brothers. It's gonna be revolutionary. <laughs>